Yeah, as long as you. That's like, I don't know if they can see the display, but hopefully. Not that bad, bad. Sim it up. I can't do it up there. concept for this idea, I thought it was a complete joke. Mr. Verani had posted a picture of the excavator on the Discord and said, I want that, but a robot. Uh, little did we know he was actually serious. Uh, so planning took as long as construction did, seeing as we were always coming up with new implementations for the Mechavator. For instance, the very last week we had it, we discussed for a while implementing a GPS RTK tracking system to the thing. But planning didn't just pertain to the Mechavator itself, but also a related side project, which was a video with a skeleton script, whole bunch of outdated movie refle references, revealed soon. Development. So the development of the Mechavator was done over the entire summer, spanning a bunch of days, mainly Saturdays. However, developing the Mechavator didn't mean exclusively like working on and repairing the actual like excavator itself. It also meant like scheduling like promotional videos, instructional and educational videos, which go hand in hand with the project to like educate the public about it. And this is like our form of like unconventional outreach efforts. And that is just like brief overview of some systems. All right, so is this the right? No. You guys tell me where I'm supposed to go. All right, next one. So there are standard controls to the excavator. There's usually mm -hmm. four standard controls. There's the two levers in the front of the passenger seat and then a left and right joystick. The two levers in front of the passenger seat control the tank treads of the excavator, uh, turning both left and right exclusively, as well as full forward and backward motion. The left joystick controls the stick boom, which through forward and backward motion uh, pushes it and pulls the arm in, and through left and right motions um, swings the arm left or right. The right joystick uh, <coughs> controls the main boom of the excavator, again, through forward and backward motions, and controls the closing and the dumping of the bucket through left and right motions. This was one of the uh, joystick manipulators, and this is how we attached it externally. You see it's just clamping onto the armrests, uh, basically a friction grip. 
Yeah, everything we attached to the exca excavator was non-destructive. So um, the excavator was just as we had it um, before um, when we were done with it. Uh, just, just so, I just so understand I understand what it is it's doing. Okay. You're basically going to use FCC parts to control the big gigantic machine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you yes. tell us that up front. <laughs> so now, now I understand well, we what we're building. Slow reveal was the right way to go here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please, please let me know when you're doing this so I can be several. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Your safe is all over. Uh, so we had two cameras on the excavator. We had a 360 camera and a front view camera. So we had a view of cabin, the controls, and uh, front camera is the duck giant camera. So. Um, and as Gabriel mentioned earlier, there's also a GPS RTK tracking system that uses an antenna, uh, a hotspot, and a GPS receiver to combine um, GPS positioning data from satellites and correctional data through the hotspot to accurately position the excavator in space around um, 15 times a second. That's what our last presentations were able to do. And this is an overview of the site. So that blue circle you see there, that is our coach's house, which is significantly more elevated than the white operational area for our excavator. The yellow line marks where the excavator was installed by trees, undergrowth, and steep slopes, while the red marks, um, while the red marks boulders, etc., as well as cliffs. And here we have our fail-safe controls. We had two types of fail-safe controls. Our primary and our secondary controls. Our primary was controlled by a bungee cable, which uh, operated to stop a liver. And then we also had a servo operated bracket to, um, hold it to hold it in place. And to preface, this only uh, stopped the controls, not the actual robot itself, which brings us to our secondary uh, failsafe, which um, used bungee cords and strings to apply tension onto the stop button, which stops the engine of the excavator itself. And um, we controlled this using an RTC controller to make sure that it looked like a fail -safe. Here's a video describing our primary safety. This is the primary safety. Uh, here's the hydraulic block thingy, the jiggy. So when it's in this position, all the hydraulic uh, controls and the joysticks are not working. Uh, and to keep this thing down, we get a dead man switch, which works when you hold the uh, shoulder down. So when you release it, you can pull it by the spongy and oh, you're safe. Uh, so if power's lost or anything, this servo is powered, doesn't hold it anymore. You don't die. Yep. To be clear, that's locking out the hydraulic pump. So even if the engine's running, none of the parts are moving. So if you pull that thing back, that's that's yeah. the safety that's built yeah, that's, into that's, this is, Yeah, both of the safeties are taking advantage of safeties that are already built into the excavator and we're making sure that our software can work. Roger, Dr. Will's question. On the satellite, how accurate did you get to the satellite uh, as? All right, so here we have the back. Uh, that's, that's coming up. All right, so here we have the backup safety. You can see there the string attaches to the base of the button, which attaches to a tension bungee cord. So we have another dead man switch where if the Mechavator ever goes out of control, he's holding down the button, he releases it, it pops up, this shuts off the engine. So we do that again.
So obviously the, the main purpose was renting an excavator wasn't to turn it into a robot, it was to clear uh, some of the trees from the backyard. But um, there's really two main reasons why we built it. One is we wanted to do a FTC like like spoof video and we wanted to we wanted to make fun of some of the rules, like the sizing cube, which it will not fit. <laughs> Then the other reason was to really show what FTC is about. It's about uh, creating new ideas and doing stuff that no one's done before. And then, yeah. I think you need a video to get questions. We do. We have that. It's not in the present. It'll be in the final video. Yeah, yeah. It's not in the present. Yeah, it's not in the present. So while this uh, video is playing, if you have any questions, we'll take them now. Okay. Which interface you are reading was satellite input into the control hub? So the satellite interface was, um, it was, okay. So it's connected over Wi-Fi to the control hub. So it's constantly getting uh, an accurate location data, I think within, what was it, two centimeters? Yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the last talk is, uh, is, is an in-depth dive into the, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. So does the police department want like this for their bomb disposal department? Is there some real life use for this thing? Um, no, the police department does not want it, but there are some um, companies, some construction companies that are actually looking forward to this kind of technology to do remote construction um, so that your excavator operators actually don't have to be on site um, to complete a construction project. So we're actually not the only people who have ever turned an excavator into a robot. There's a few companies that have done this before, but we discovered their existence after we uh, undertook this project. I'm like, that's clear we did. Yes. <laughs> very... So did you come to the realization after he gave you, okay, he gave you the requirement that says it has to be non-destructive to the machine and has to bolt in and stuff like that. But then you realize, wait a minute, we should just go into their control system and did you get to that pretty quickly? So there's a much easier way to do this. Mm -hmm. but, okay. Yeah, I think we were all very disappointed that we couldn't actually take apart an excavator. I prevented them from doing it. It was a <laughs> rental, right? Yes. You know, so it, it was costing me enough just for, to have it on the property for the real reason it was there, which was to you know, clear some of our land. So we realized pretty early on the only way we could do it was externally through yeah. like all red systems. The remote control excavator did come in handy in helping some of the use of So I mean, practical uses other than jousting, they do exist. It is kind of strange watching it move around without a person in the cab. Yeah. I can tell you, it's like, you're still not quite yeah. 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 That's all. Oh, we've got a short cut. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we have a teaser for the entertainment video coming out hopefully soon. Well, you did too. This could be like Bambi versus Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I think it should last too long. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. I was also going to say that we have the actual component, robotic component that went on the excavator back there if you want to look at it. Yeah. We had to read this. We brought that. That is an excavator, technically. They have cable managers. Two side things with the joysticks. Are you all the wacky auto pictures? Thank you.
To me, I am a 12 year first veteran. I hate, contrary to what he says, I hate cilantro and celery. I, I, I detest it. And I'm the engineering captain on 8565, and I like these things. So if you like these things, you should talk to me. All right, so quick introduction to Roadrunner. Uh, you may have seen a lot of robots in the field that make these nice and smooth curves. That's